Hello everyone, I'm Rick Dior. This lesson will be on finger cymbals. Finger cymbals are an ancient percussion instrument originating from Turkey. They're also called zil, which is spelled Z-I-L. These days, zil are thicker finger cymbals like this. So if you see it written zil in an orchestra part or a theater part, you want to use a much heavier finger cymbal. So now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about what these are used for uh, in modern times, as well as ancient times. So they were used mostly, and still are, for something called belly dancing, which I will not be doing for you today, but you can thank God for that. But they're held like this. So you can either hold them in the first finger or the middle finger, all right? And they're played with the thumb as well with straps. And they'll normally hold them up as they're doing their interesting moves and they can also muffle them. Okay, and normally they will be in both hands. Not always, but normally. So you can play some intricate rhythms like that. Uh, it's In a way it's a little similar to castanets it's not as intricate as castanets, the hand castanets, but it's similar. So what we do in orchestras is use heavier finger cymbals than those uh, so they, you know, cut over the orchestra. Zildjian makes some good finger cymbals as well as Sabian and also Paiste. So these finger cymbals are mostly heavier than what you would get if you were a belly dancer. And I prefer the thin ones, although I do use uh, and have a couple sets of heavier ones. You can get them in thin, medium, and heavy. So normally they're played in an orchestra setting like this. They can also be played like this. And like this. So once again, you can play them like this. Then up like this and then upside down like this. Now the most important thing is that you don't hit that white strap that you see there that's tied. So you might want to cut that back as I have. Okay, because if you're playing like this, you'll actually, let's see if I can do that. It's hard to do, but you'll catch that strap and muffle it. So be careful for that. So you just want to hit right on the edge. Okay. Now, what you don't want to do is anything like this, unless it calls for that. That's kind of a clapper part, or if, if you're trying to emulate a belly dancer, you might want to do that because that is the sound. But if you want pure tone, you need to catch it like this. All right, so that's how you do handheld finger cymbals. Now, you can also play them with a triangle beater. These brass ones work best, and that's a little more pure of tone. You're not getting both cymbals ringing. So you can do that as well, all right? It's, um, you know, you're not going to miss, and sometimes if you have to go quickly to play finger cymbals from something else, you don't have a choice. There's not time to pick them up, so you'd have to mount them. Now, in that case, there's a couple options as well. You can use a finger cymbal machine. In my triangle video I talked about these Miller machines. This is a Miller finger cymbal machine. It's not great, but it's an option. So you see this rod here connecting this finger cymbal and you just put that in the block and adjust the height. Now a few times I've put a little heavier beater in here, and this is the one it came with, so I put that back in there to show you. But that actually gives you a little more sound. And just like all Miller machines, you're going to get some contact noise. So it's not the thing to use close mic or in the studio, but in the jam, there's nothing that beats it. The other kind of finger mach uh, machine that you can build looks like this. Okay, and that can mount on a stand. You can also buy these. I think Danmar used to make these. 
And what I've done here is take taken two heavy finger symbols and one medium and put that on top and it hits the two bottoms there like this. And that needs to be tightened up a little when I get a chance, but you see that that is a good solution. All right, so it sounds a little better than the Miller machine. It is a little more clumsy. So, and, and you can hit it with a stick, just like the Miller machine or your hands. It will mount on a stand as well. So those are two types of finger symbol machines. Now, they also make finger symbol mallets. These are made by the American Drum Company. They make some really cool mallets, all kinds of neat stuff. These are fantastic. I love these. Not just for playing like finger cymbals, but we use these a lot of times to uh, uh, simulate crotales, which uh, are better known as antique cymbals. They're used in a lot of orchestral music, uh, contemporary music. Debussy used them in uh, Prelude to Afternoon of the Fawn. Uh, it's just a beautiful sound. Maybe we'll do a separate video on those, but those are tuned discs, very small cymbals. And if you play these on glockenspiel, you can really simulate close, closely the sound of crotales. Uh, again, if you have a fast change or you uh, can't rent them or you don't have them, these will simulate crotales a, a good bit. So it's worth having a pair of these mallets. They're also great for playing other finger, finger cymbals like this. Or even striking another finger symbol. Because once again, you're getting the sound of both things instead of just hitting it with a triangle beater. So those are highly recommended. Now, as we spoke uh, about in my intro, these are called Zill, just like finger symbols are, but these are original Turkish Zill, and they're very heavy and they're beautiful sounding. So. And I have two sets I like. This set is really nice, so. And here's the other symbol. It's going to be similar. So just a hair lower. Now you can also play these like this if you want. The string does get in the way. Or like this. So if you need really loud finger symbols, these are the way. Uh, this is the way to go. You can hang it on a cymbal stand like that, and just reach out and hit it with the triangle beater, which is what I normally do. All right. And again, common in theater, orchestra playing, a lot of contemporary music. It'll it'll look like that. It won't say finger symbol. It should say zill, which means a heavier finger symbol. Now finally, we have these clappers or paddle finger cymbals and there's a couple ways to play these you can play them like this now there are no substitute for finger cymbals but you can do some pretty neat things if you play them on your knee they sound like this All right, so those are really nice. Uh, I'm sorry to say I cannot remember where I got these. I bought them for a show a long time ago that I had to do something just like that. And if you look up finger symbols or paddle finger symbols, I'm sure you'll find images of these on Google or something. Uh, but LP does make this version, which is not as good. It's too thick uh, right here, but you can hear that. So it's, it still works really well. It's much, much louder than these, but it doesn't play rhythms as cleanly.
All right, so it's not bad at all. It's a little louder, a little higher pitch too, and a little bit clumsy because again, this is so thick. So if I was going to buy some of these, I'd buy the thinner ones. Again, nothing wrong with the LPs, they're fine. And they're probably made a little sturdier too. But, um, uh, you know, they're just a little heavier and a little more clumsy if you're doing intricate rhythms. So what should you own? Well, you should probably own a set of thin to medium finger cymbals. Again, Sabian, Zildjian, Peisty, they'll make them. Probably mine will make some too. So you can do stuff like that, just regular things in orchestra. You should probably own one type of finger cymbal machine that you can do mounted that sounds similar to finger cymbals. That would be my first choice. And my second choice would be the Miller machine, which is much thinner. That sounds a little more like a bellhop bell than a finger cymbal, but it works, okay? And then you should own a set of Zill heavy finger cymbals that you can use as, you know, in the studio for uh, an accent or a beautiful sound. Uh, they really sound gorgeous. I use these a lot in recordings. Or if a part says for Zill, or, you know, in an orchestra setting as a substitute for finger cymbals, so. And these are not expensive. In fact, except for the machines, none of this stuff costs a lot of money, all right? And as if you want, you can get some of these American drum. Uh, they call this uh, Convertibels GL8. So that's what it's called. Um, I'm sure they're still made. And these are great, again, for simulating Crotale's antique symbols uh, on glockenspiel. Sounds very, very similar. Not exactly, but similar in a pinch. So I hope this helps you. Thanks.